Morning, Jonathan. Welcome to Sea Talk. Can you just tell us who you are, who you trade with? Yeah. So, Jonathan James, um, been in this tree 25 years. Previously, been a Budgeons retailer, a spa retailer. Currently, uh, my group is supplied by Best Way Costco. My son's got a store that's uh, together with Morrison's Daily. I mean, it's great to see next generation coming into the business. Um, that's amazing. You know, we're trying the same in our business as well. And it's just, you know, it's just good. The main part of today's uh retailer to retailer interview is the shocking news that we heard uh, which landed on our on our laps the other week about disposable vapes going away and the impact that's going to have on our business you know uh, i know for me jonathan it's going to impact us heavily uh what's this going to do for you i don't think anybody's going to think otherwise it's going to be a massive impact it's highlighted a problem that that we've all had in that it's not a word i'd use lightly but we've all become quite complacent because mm -hmm. this this little this little gantry sat in the corner or, or some some of our colleagues obviously got these sort of stores within stores um has generated significant cash margin for us all um and sat there doing its own thing really we, we just wheeled the stuff in and in, and sold it through with earning good margin I, I think i don't think any of us were naive enough to think that at some point, it wasn't going to change because we, we've, I've had numerous conversations with retailers over the last twelve months saying, mm -hmm. you know, this this is going to this is going to be hit at some point. I think we all thought it was probably going to get some form of legislation with regards to to duty mm -hmm. um, or tax would be implemented. I don't think any of us saw a complete ban coming. Um, no. And talking to people. In, in in the vape industry, and I think they saw a complete ban, ban coming. They could see that things were going to get tightened up. Maybe mm. um, it, it, it was going to come plain packaging, or it was going to have to go dark, the same as tobacco. Um, but yeah. this outright ban has, has, has been a shock to us all. Do you think this has been caused by, and we've all been affected by this, you know, um, these pop up shops that have popped up um, all over the country that have been selling the illegal vapes? Uh, retailers that have not adhered um, to what they should have been doing. Do you reckon that's another reason why government have stepped in and thought, if we can't control it, unless put a blanket ban? Absolutely. I think it's come from all angles. It's, it's been a perfect storm, really. And the, and the government, I, I think they had to be seen to react. You've got the mm -hmm. environmentalists. I, I live along uh, next to a really busy road. And if I go litter picking, even where my home is, I'm guaranteed to pick up disposable vapes mm -hmm. um, that have been chucked out of windows. So you can see the environmental impact it was having. Um, and obviously, these these batteries are all, uh, you know, they're all in the devices still. Yes. Um, so we, we could see that bit. You could see that, 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 that children were being lulled into a false sense of security mm -hmm. uh, regarding the fact that, that, that vapes were... were being smoked there's pe numerous people um that i didn't even think would smoke were, were, were taking vape using vapes mm -hmm. so i think right across the whole if you, if you looked at the the problems the government faced i can see exactly why they've come up with this bit yes. um and it hasn't been helped at all by those unscrupulous people who have who have been selling vapes and let's face it you could get vapes pretty much anywhere yes um and sell them to to, to to underage children but but i also don't think that this problem is going to cure that because where those where those children are getting them from particularly yeah. they're still going to be able to get them from so yeah this is a this has been a sledgehammer to crack a nut regarding us guys those of us who have got challenge 25 policies in place mm -hmm. um are treating them as we legally would treat them we've mm -hmm. certainly not told to anybody under 18 wouldn't dream of it um, so wherever they've been getting them from, that problem's not gone away. So I mean, we we had we had a major problem in our business last year. It took us the best part of six months um, to get a store closed down in Coventry. Um, not only was he selling illegal vapes, not only was he selling to minors, um, but he was also selling selling counterfeit cigarettes. So it's almost like we had to do the work for trading standards. And I felt sorry for Andy from Trading Standards because he says we just haven't got the people to enforce this. And then when I switched on the BBC News uh, that Friday morning after the announcement had, had landed on our laps, saying that we're going to do more test purchasing, we're going to do more uh, on-the-spot fines. In my view, uh, what's going through the back of my head is the black market's going to get bigger than it's ever been before. Mm. So they'll get on no matter what. They'll, they'll get the product. Yeah. 
so so this hasn't solved it what it has done is put a massive strain on many many retailers independent retailers particularly because let's face it the major multiples never really got behind it no. um so this is not going to impact them um but the independent retailer who sold perfectly legal product perfectly mm-hmm. legally is the it's... one that's going to end up picking up the pieces and i think i think many of us um have used have, vape and the astronomical rise in its popularity mm-hmm. the growth within our stores vape has cushioned the blow on a number of things so you yes know, the the the, the rate, wage increase is going up oh, well you know, mm-hmm. vapes pay for that um yeah. electricity bills going through the roof vapes has paid for that yeah. um all of a sudden vapes aren't going to be there um or or in the in the guise that they currently are mm-hmm. and that's that's where the issue is going to going to going to hit so so many people uh, well uh, what independent stock in vapes is, is not going to be impacted if we all are um, yeah. it, it's it's how we and i think that's the bit uh, i mean this is going to be a story with a, a beginning a middle and an end so this is this is only just the beginning yeah i mean we, it's true i mean we've got the generation bank coming on as well with cigarettes um you know cigarettes aren't as important as they used to be because you're 100 percent right the vapes have taken over and they did carry that big burden to keep our stores profitable as well um you know there's going to be a major impact when this happens will there be more stores closed in 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 around communities um you know who knows what this is going to do but you know i think there's a bit of education piece around this as well where we look at what do we do you know is there a better way we can do it do we get ahead of the game because if they're going to ban vapes uh how do we capture themselves in store and I know both of us have been looking at there's other ways that we could do this, right? Totally. Um, and I think this is where the the, the the entrepreneurship in all of us will, will come to the fore because um, my daughter used the term. It's, it's a very modern used term now. We've got a pivot. Um, mm-hmm. It's not a term I'd normally use, but we have got a pivot. We've got to look at what we've got. Um, and to be fair, we've probably got that for X amount of months. You know, once it's legislation's passed, we're still going to have six months from when it's passed. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I'm hearing, it could be the end. Of the, oh, it will impact us from the end of this year, early, early next. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't. I think the thing is, we can't sit on our hands and think, okay, that's that's going to come. We've, what, what, what the guys I'm talking to, um, are particularly in the vaping industry, that's where where um i'm talking to those guys because let's face it they live off they they live off vapes 100 yes. percent. it's their income that's their livelihood so they are we're the gp if you like they're the consultant mm-hmm. specialist yeah um so it, it's we've got to take learnings from that vape industry just the same as on food to go we've we've made lots of learnings from the hospitality sector mm-hmm. um and, and those lines have got blurred we've, we've each really we've got to look at, at the guys who are, are earning 100 percent they're living from vapes and see what they're going to do and, and, mm-hmm. and work i think work in collaboration with them and as to how how we can learn from them hopefully educate the consumer apparently i was reading there's four and a half million vapors in the uk and um, they're not just going to go away because no. because this legislation's changed um yeah. some of them obviously will go to the black market mm-hmm. um but we, we've got to make sure that the ones who do continue using our stores, because we can't forget as well, Paul, and it's not lost on you either, I know, is the halo effect that vapes bring. The guy coming in for vapes, it's, it's, it's what else do they buy when they're there? So it's a knock-on sale make... in the store, isn't it? It's a confect, it's, it's soft drinks, it's that impulse products, right? Just it. Yeah. And, and we've, got to, we've got to make sure that we keep that customer, the halo effect that comes with it. So yeah. that's where the challenge is coming. So that's the beginning. And... Um, I was talking to my CEO about the larger group, and and obviously we're we're, we're looking at what's happening. Um, we we want to understand more about what's happening with the legislation, so we know how we need to to react to it. Um, mm-hmm. And I think lots of people are doing that. Um, my son's taking quite an innovative approach, um, and we're working with a local um, guy who's got a number of a chain of vape stores, mm-hmm. um, but local to us. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, we've got a meeting with him at, at two o'clock this afternoon as to what he would suggest we 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 start how we start to educate the customer that this transition's mm-hmm. happening already. Um, only twenty five percent of his his turnover is is actually disposable vape, so mm-hmm. he's got seventy five percent of other stuff going on. So it's it's almost like we're going to take a step back again, aren't we? We're going to go back to them traditional 
um, vapes that we was we was reliant on before. Um, but I think the, the big point you just made on there was the education piece. We've got to re-educate ourselves to re-educate our shoppers to capture that sale now, right? Is it a closed pod system if that's what we're going to do? Is it going back to the 10 mil uh, vape juices? But I think creating a store within a store concept probably is the bit that we all need to be looking at. Well, again, the legislation, but where is that going to, is that going to mean that, that from what I've been reading is, are they going to, they, 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 they're clearly doing everything they can to clamp down on it. And from what I'm yes. seeing, it's going to be very much behind the counter, no different to tobacco. Mm-hmm. So it all depends how that legislation plays out. So um, I, we, we won't be putting a store within a store. Um, no, that, 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 that's certainly not. But what we will do is make sure that what we are allowed to have, whatever that display may look like, mm-hmm. uh, we'll ensure that it, it's got it's got something for everybody within it um, to, to yeah. make sure we, we appeal to everybody. Because let's not forget, packaging is going to be changing. Flavors yes. undoubtedly are going to be changing. Yeah, um, I only, I read something that, but again, you know, the legislation out there that said it could be tobacco, menthol, mint and fruit would be the flavors allowed mm-hmm. so that's going to be a dramatic change only looking in our our vape gantry last night the different flavors the different types that's all going you know that that yeah. won't be there so it's it's just making sure that i was talking to retail the other day he was saying he's getting people coming in saying oh i thought these were banned yeah. um you know it, it's we, we, it's quite clear we're gonna to have to educate the consumer because yeah. nobody else is going to I think we'll, it's a lot of changes for our stores as well that will happen because a lot of us have given a whole back wall up for, for vaping and we've gone with different suppliers and they've come up with different uh, store within concept, store within store concepts. And I think what do we use that space for? And then it's a big change again going, going forward. Um, so I don't know, it's, it's, it's challenging, right? But I think we've got to look at the positive outcome of this and how do we start getting there? Yes, definitely. No. So th- we've got to get some positives. We always get positives out of negatives. And it, yep. it's a, it's a, this is going to be a fast moving story, I think. Um, yep. It's a very innovative, innovative um, category. Let's yep. face it, looking at where vapes have come from, as you rightly said, we had the little, the little bottles of liquid and look where it's now got to. But it's a very innovative uh, category. And yes. there's a there's a, a lot of very large companies um, that, that supply that whole market. So that undoubtedly they're going to be looking closely at it. We just need yeah. to make sure that we and let's face it, there's there's nobody better place than independent retailers to to pivot. If I yes. want a better term, yeah, we're all, we're all good at it. We have to get round things, and that's what we've done. That's why we're all still here. Um, and I think this character will be exactly the same. Good stuff and that's i think that's a great way to end on that positive note is you know there's a lot of work to be done but i think we'll we'll come out of it the other end if we do it correctly yeah let's let's, let's remind ourselves it's a story with a beginning a middle and an end this yeah. is only just the beginning the middle yeah. bit's going to be you know where where everybody's going to be sitting there looking at the legislation and i'm sure groups mm-hmm. like acs uh, are going to be be a, a, a voice for us to, to make sure that 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 does get looked at yep. and then the end is going to be what the legislation looks like and what we need to do yep. to to to, uh, to to make sure that we've got a solution for everybody good stuff thank you jonathan it's been, uh, it's been great and uh, hopefully we can share this out with our fellow retailers out there and uh, we can all get on the same journey